Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about these dash cam mirrors and how they break. I bought one for my dad a while back and um, his broke as well and so did this one. So this is the second time me having to fix this and I thought I would just show you guys how to fix it in case you're running into the same issue. Uh, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. I've just kind of been busy with working and stuff like that and I got the uh, malware right now so I'm kind of stuck at home doing nothing. So I thought it'd be a good time just to make a quick video. And hopefully help somebody out so never mind the crack I dropped it a long time ago but I'm just going to show you what happens with these okay so if you can move this camera around and get in, get it to work again most likely this is going to fix your problem um, for me and my stepdad, what we usually do is we take the mirror out of our car every night. So, um, it's always getting, uh, used going back and forth like this. If you leave your dash mirror camera thing in your car all the time and never played with this, this probably is not going to help you out, but it might. So I'll just, uh, show you guys how to fix this issue. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is crack it open. And uh, you might have to use a screwdriver or something right here to pry it open the first time. But after that, it should pop open pretty easy. If you just put a pick in there or something and just run it along the, the, the seam. Camera's kind of in the way right now. Just speed this part up. You don't want to pry it open. You want to get it so it undoes all those clips. On yours, you might want to look for screws too. This one just uh, gets clamped together or clipped together or whatever. Or snapped together, I guess would be the better word. Okay. So once that's off... I want to carefully lift it up and see which way the wires are. Just be careful with it. Okay, so the issue is this guy here, this ribbon cable. And what happens is when you bring this back and forth, it just makes, um, it breaks the connections in, inside the ribbon. So you might have glue on yours here, so you have to pop this part open. And if you don't have a plug for the battery, like this one, I think it's soldered on for the battery. So you just have to be careful you don't turn the power on while you're doing this. Okay, yours might have a sticker on this, so you're going to have to remove the sticker to get to the screws. So you can see right here, this crease, this is what causes the problem. It can only bend back and forth so many times, and it'll end up breaking. So just remove all these screws that you can see here. Yeah, so sorry for not uploading many videos lately, or for a long time. Just got a new job and everything, and been busy with my life, doing that kind of stuff. So modding and stuff has gone way back to the pile right now. But I'd like to get back into it again. Okay, let me see if I can pop this off. So I'm doing this in real time. I haven't done this for a while, so have patience with me here. OK, 
Okay, so that came off the tracks. So you're, you'll probably have little screws here, but you'll probably have a piece of tape here that you have to remove. And that's for this style. Every dash cam might be a tad different. Guys, not coming out. No screw there because I'm blind. And same thing, just pop this little guy out. Okay, so the tricky part is finding out what uh, pitch and how many pins are on here. So the best bet is just to bring it up to a camera, take a picture of it, and just uh, bring it into paint or something like that and just count the pins. So this is a 24 pin at a 0.5 pitch. So it should be about 12 mm's. So if you have a caliper, you can test it that way. If I can do basically you want to go on the middle of the pin this is far away so so it should be about 12 and you'll want to make sure you count these pins correctly because if you get one with 23 or a 22 cable instead of a 24 cable it's not going to work and uh, yeah so just take your time counting these pins and uh, most likely you'll figure it out um, If anybody has problems trying to figure out if they don't have a caliper or something, I can try posting up um, a PDF of the this cable or whatever so you can match it up. Or you can take a quarter or something like that and match it up this way. So here we would just go, this is Canada quarter, so it would go up to the antlers. So this would be the 24. If it was a 1 millimeter at 24 pins, it would be about the size of the quarter. So again, just take your time. I'll show you a web page where I got them from. Uh, um, not getting paid by the seller or nothing like that. It's just all this guy deals in is cable. So on AliExpress, it's pretty good usually if the seller only sells one thing because then you know you won't get scammed. So it's a pretty good deal. I would order more than one too because it's going to happen again. I think I ordered four of them. I just have to jump back into this video here because I forgot to mention something important with these cables. This would be considered a type A style and uh, it's because both pins... If you lay it flat or like that, if it was a B style, one side would have the pins here and the other side would be the blue here, at least with this seller. So just make sure when you're ordering it, look at the seller's um, way he defines what A and B is. Um, yeah, so for me, for this seller here, just make sure to get the A version. All right, so... After that, wait your month or two weeks or whatever it is, and then get your cables. You'll also, before you order two, you'll want to get the length of it too. So I believe I ordered, um, yeah, I ordered um, 24 pin, 0.5 pitch, and 150 mm's. So it's up to you. Just make sure you get roughly the same length or a bit longer than the original cable. This isn't the original one anymore anyways. It's already a replacement. This one has gone through hell on my packaging for the past year, so I probably won't use this one. So here's a new cable here, and it's simple, just reverse all the steps. So this one might have been a used cable as well already because it has a crease here. I might not have the right cables here. I think I'm going to go with this one. I think this one was probably used already. 
So I'll go with this guy, even though there's a crease in it. So to stop this from happening, I would suggest never um, pushing in your camera back and forth, causing this cable to bend back and forth, because again, that's what causes the problem. I guess I'll put this guy back on first. Don't think my screwdriver is magnetized. I had lost one of these screws. Is that guy just turning forever? Probably. Okay, once that's screwed in back in, slide this guy back in. I want to go both there. Because this guy here locks it in. So you might not even want to use this, but if you don't, then this camera is going to come right out. So that might be a problem. Any of these screws are really screwing back in properly. I think I might have stripped them the last time I did it. If your screws are stripped, you might want to put some hot glue on these just to make sure they won't pop off and run on your board. All right, so the last step here is just putting this back in, which can be a pain in the butt sometimes. And then just take a look at your blue strip here, making, making sure it's pretty straight. If it's not straight, it might be shorting out a little bit. And then before you shut it all back in together, I would suggest just testing it quickly just to make sure it works. And there you go. So you should be able to move this camera back and forth for now. Just keep in mind, if you do it, say, 100 times, it just might break again. So it's up to you. So instead of throwing these cameras away, that's how you fix them.
Just let that shut off. So this cable is supposed to be like that. And just snap it back in. And give it one more test for the hell of it. So I like my hot glue, so it might be a good idea, just the hot glue here too. So then you can never push this back in. If you're somebody like me that's always taking this in and out of the car, the downfalls to that is A, you're gonna break the cable, and if you drop it, you're gonna get a crack in it like mine. So it's up to you guys. Anyways, I hope this helps somebody out. Uh, again, sorry for not posting up a lot of videos lately. Not sure if I'm gonna get around to more, I'll try to. Besides that, uh, like and subscribe please, and that's all.